So, all right, my name is Paul, and I'm excited to tell you about a new Gazelle extension that can automate your protobuf rules. So to start, I want to give you a little bit of background on the, um, the project that kind of precipitated building this. So this is kind of a large-ish mono repo that supports about 1,000 developers. It contains about 100, 450 protofiles spanning, you know, five or six different languages. It uses a standard, you know, collection of proto and gRPC plugins, plus a number of custom plugins. The legacy workflow is, you know, slow, non-incremental, involving make files and Docker files. And using this approach with Bazel and Gazelle, we're able to migrate this to uh, just the build files. It's now incremental and fast. And the developer workflow is this. Um, you know, as a developer, I can just create or edit my proto file and then run Gazelle, and I don't have to do pretty much anything else. So the challenge in doing this was kind of dealing with the behavior of the plugins um, and, you know, particularly some of these custom plugins, which can kind of do some wonky, weird things like they may not generate files. They may only do validation or they may only generate a file under specific conditions like the presence of some enum option matching a specific name and some subdirectory or whatever. So even though the plugins are deterministic, there's not always a one to one um, correlation of input file action and output file. So the problems that we're trying to solve are, you know, reducing burden on the users, supporting use cases where the plugins have some of these more complex kind of behaviors, and to decouple dependencies. And by that, I mean that, so the providing rule set, in this case, stack B rules proto, whatever versions of protobuf or gRPC or any other dependency should not dictate what the dependency of protobuf or gRPC is used inside the mono repo. So we want those things to move independently and using a gazelle approach allows us to do that. Um, if you're not familiar with uh, protobuf, here's kind of like an overview of how the tool works. So, you know, on the as a user, you launch a process, you give ProtoC some files, and then it consults with a number of plugins. Some of those plugins are built into the ProtoC tool itself, others are external binaries, and those are responsible for building the file content, which is then sent back and then put on the file system. And the location of those files is a little bit, you know, like variable. So to explore that further, we're going to play a little game. I'm calling this game where this triple star is my generated file. And you will be given a proto file and some options, and you have to predict where the file is going to end up. So for the first one, super simple proto file, protoc gen go. So where does this end up? Well, it doesn't go anywhere. This is an error because protoc gen go actually doesn't know where to put this. So in the next example, we've introduced this go package option. So we run this, indeed, the protofile is relative to that go package um, option. Now, in the third example for 300 points, go package is the same, but now we've introduced this M or mapping option. And indeed, when we run this, uh, it overrides everything else. So that wasn't so hard. You probably did very well, but we can kind of use this to help crystallize our understanding of the types of information that we need in order to correctly predict where a generated file will end up. And it turns out there's three. So you need to be able to read the proto file because it's really the source of truth. You need to, you know, know the proto C options and you need to have some understanding of how the plugin implementation works and how it interprets the first two. And that's key because kind of the, this Gazelle extension is really a little mini, you know, framework for predicting where our generated files are going to end up. And I think it underscores why proto rules are a good fit for Gazelle, because rather than waiting until the, you know, the user types Bazel build, we can, um, and, you know, we have one hand tied behind our back because Starlark doesn't let us read the actual file. Um, we can shift all that complexity into Gazelle where, you know, we can use like better tooling, you know, static typing, go compiler, write better tests. And as a result, the remaining Starlark logic becomes like really refreshingly simple. So here's the repository, it's calling it Stack Rules Proto V2. Um, it delegates um, to the built-in Gazelle extension, which, uh, you know, has one responsibility, which is generating the proto library rule. And then this extension maintains a registry of plugins, and those plugins mirror the behavior of their corresponding tool. It has a registry of rules, and these rules are the little factories that produce the things that Gazelle actually merges into the build file. And then you take these um, plugins and rules and configure them as a language. And that language is the thing which determines on a per proto library basis the child rules that are uh, generated as a result. Let's take a look at that. These are the Gazelle directives. So the first line is basically declaring that we're using this 
built-in Java plugin, we're assigning an identifier called Java in yellow. And then in the next two lines, we're sort of declaring that we're using two rules. Those are in blue. And in the third part, we're kind of tying those all together, um, giving it an identifier called Java. And then when we take a build file and we say Gazelle Proto Language Java is enabled, and you have a proto library rule, when you run this, you get a proto compile rule and a proto Java library rule. So the proto compile rule is the thing which actually you know, runs proto C, generates this thing source jar, and proto Java library is consuming the thing source jar and its sources attribute. Quick uh, note about this name proto Java library. We could have written this to say just Java library because the actual rule is just a super thin wrapper over the native one. But in order to kind of future proof this, because we don't want some you know, hypothetical future Java Gazelle extension, which is claiming ownership of this uh, Java library rule, we don't want to conflict with that. So we're kind of future proofing it by aliasing to these different names. So I don't have really time in the 10 minute talk to go over some of the Go stuff, but a plugin responsibility is to basically inform the rest of the code which files will be generated under a specific context. Um, and a rule is responsible for building the kind of final thing that you give you hand back to Gazelle and its generate uh, rules function. So build rules, we kind of met them already, but proto compile, this one has an outputs attribute, which names the generated files that will be uh, produced, and it consults, it uses a set of plugins. Those are providers to the proto plugin rule, and a proto plugin really is just associating a label with the actual external binary tool, which is the plugin itself. So the remaining time, let me show you a really cool uh, repository rule called proto repository. And if you know how Go repository works, it's basically, you know, uh, it downloads something from the internet, runs Gazelle over those files. This does the same thing, but instead of, you know, it's got this new Gazelle extension built into it. So you say which build directives, which languages you want enabled. And this configuration attribute is a YAML file. I think someone said they were using a JSON file. This is probably the same concept is instead of expressing your, um, Gazelle directives in uh, you know that textual form you can express it in, in YAML and that's useful because then you can pass it around share it between different proto repository rules and then this import statement I don't have time to go into the details but this is sort of the magic of how it does dependency resolution and so when we apply this then to the Bazel build Bazel repository you know referencing Google APIs remote APIs proto APIs then when we have a setup like this we can do this which is, you know, you create a proto file and you just drop in an import statement, which is, you know, source main Java, blah, 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 build event string proto, which is a fairly com complex uh, proto dependency and Gazelle figures out the rest. So this is nice because it can save you a bunch of time because you can spend a fair amount of time trying to figure this out, but, you know, independently. And, you know, I've definitely spent some time doing that. So that is it. Um, here's a link to the open source repository and, um, I've also written another Gazelle extension, which just provides some debugging of, you know, showing what Gazelle is doing while you're running it. It's sort of useful on its own, but if you're thinking about writing a Gazelle extension, you might consider this as sort of like a starting point because it's pretty much all the boilerplate without really doing much else. So thank you very much. Appreciate your attention. And yeah. Happy day.